Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Diamondback Hanjo 5 All-Road Bike. Diamondback's Hanjo Gravel and Adventure Bike lineup was developed to be versatile and capable both on the road and dirt. Since their initial introduction, Diamondback has continually updated and refined the lineup with both aluminum and carbon frame variations. In this review, we're going to be looking at the Hanjo 5, which is their top aluminum model and what we think offers the best value in the lineup. You can see the packaging on the bike is really nicely done. It's a cardboard bike box with just a minor amount of assembly. The front wheel and a couple of smaller components are actually not attached to the bike, so you need to reattach them just so it fit in the box. But everything comes in really well packed. You can see all that protective gear foam on all these sensitive areas. So we didn't have any damage on ours. It just takes a little bit of time to take off. In terms of specs, it's a $2,050 bike. Endurance geometry, which is something you can find on all the Hanjo bikes, and it has a 2x11 Shimano GRX drivetrain, so really high quality components. You have hydraulic disc brakes, a carbon fork, and then through axles on the front and rear. So, again, a really modern bike that takes advantage of all the latest gear. You have 700 by 37 WTB tires as well. These are tubeless ready with a 21 millimeter internal width on the heat wheel set. Putting the bike together is pretty straightforward. You don't need to be a mechanic. Again, they just disassembled it enough to fit in the box. So the seat post, the handlebar, all the cabling is there. It's just a little bit off to the side. So you need to reattach it to the stem. Our bike at the large size comes in at 23.2. So pretty competitive. Obviously not the lightest bike on the market, but for this price point, it's really competitive and something you'd easily carry. They include all the necessary hardware and tools to put the bike together. You will need your own torque wrench though, just to make sure everything's torqued properly. You want to put on the front wheel, a little bit tedious as you have to get the alignment with the rotors correct, and then run the through axles through. You can see the instruction manuals in there as well. So everything's really simple and easy to follow. You don't need to be a bike mechanic for this. So once you get it to slide through, there's other little details like the pedal. So you can see nice flat pedals with traction pins on there. So you have a lot of traction when you're off-road. Remember they're cross-threaded, so you don't want to cross-thread it. One side is reverse-threaded, so the drivetrain side is standard righty-tighty, while the other side is actually righty-loosey, so you just have to remember it's a little bit opposite. And the pedals themselves are actually marked, so you won't get them confused, and they have the engraving on there. Once you're done, you want to just tighten everything down with a torque wrench, which is not provided, and make sure the position is what you want. Now let's go over the fit and finish of the Diamondback Hanjo 5. As you can see, the bike has an endurance style geometry and that puts you more upright and it's great for off-road or on-road use. You can see the head tube and the seat tube have a more slack angle. And you have a very tall head tube and this is the size large frame, but it's tall for all the frames. It's only available in one color scheme and it's a little bit polarizing. It's a, almost a plum color with a bright painter's blue for the diamond back and some of the badging. It definitely grows on you. It's a little bit strange of a combination, but looks good. And you have a little bit of a metallic flake in there as well. Now let's take a look at the front end of the Hanjo 5. With the Hanjo 5 and the Hanjo 4, you get the carbon fiber monocoque fork. So that means it absorbs a lot of the impacts and dampens harsher elements on the road. And it's a great feature, especially if you're riding off-road. It's a tapered headset as well, so you can see how it tapers in. And then you also have mounts on the fork for racks, water bottles, or additional gear. It's a really nice feature to have. As far as tires, the bike comes with 700 by 37 WTB Riddler tires. You can see the tread on them is really optimized for gravel or on-road use. So a lot of traction and nice balance between a thicker mountain biking tire or road bike tire. The wheel set itself is a Heat Tomcat wheel set, 21 millimeter inner width, and they're actually tubeless ready with the rim tape already pre-applied. So you just need to swap the tires out or just put the sealant in there if you want to run tubeless. You also have the flat mounted disc brakes on the front and rear against Shimano brand and really nice. So you can see the routing for the cable on that goes right through the fork. So really clean and leaves it open for any other features you want to put on there like a water bottle or rack. And if you look down again, you can see this, this bike actually comes with a through axle. So a really nice modern interface. Instead of a quick release, you have a thicker 12 millimeter through axle. So it makes it compatible with all the modern wheel sets and gives you the stability you need. Now let's take a look at the cockpit. You can see you have a heat aluminum stem with a heat aluminum handlebar. And it's really nice to see matching components, really just makes it look more complete and higher end. 
It also has 12 degrees of flare, which is something you want for off-road use. So you can get low, but you still get the wider handlebar that you'd see with a flat handlebar, which gives you more stability. You have the Shimano GRX brifters on here, so you can see the shifters and brakes are integrated and really nice and smooth. So these are hydraulic disc brakes and really smooth shifting right from the factory. If we take a closer look at the head tube, you can see how tall it is. And this is the size large frame, so it's a little bit more exaggerated, but definitely taller than a road bike. And that means it puts you more upright as the handlebars themselves are higher. You can see the exposed welds on here as well. And a little bit of that metallic flake and that plum color scheme. The top tube is also partially hydroform, so that means it actually tapers off. So it almost looks like a carbon bike because you don't just have standard round tubing. It's a really nice feature. If we look down a little bit, you can see you have a nice thick down tube with the Diamondback branding on it, external cable routing, and again, exposed welds. That's one downside of this bike. The higher end bikes will have internal cable routing, which looks cleaner. But with this one, you don't have cables on the top. So you can see the brakes actually run down and then along the bottom. So you can still run frame bags or anything you need. Two water bottle cages here. So we have one installed and then you have the bolts for the other one right there if you need it. In terms of drivetrain, you have full Shimano GRX here with a two by 11 setup. So two on the front, 11 on the rear. There's actually a subcompact setup. So it's 46 by 30. That means the gearing is a little bit short. So at higher speeds, you're gonna spin out, which is one downside if you wanna use this as a road bike, but off the trail, it gives you a lot more granny gears and lower gear range. So nice compromise. You have flat pedals and you can see nice and wide open. So any mud or dirt will go right through them and they have traction pegs built right in. We take a look at the rear dropouts. So you can see they sort of bow out. It gives it a unique look and also improves the compliance of the bike as they can sort of flex, especially on harder roads. You can also see there's tons of space here because this is a disc brake setup. You don't have any rim brakes blocking you. So you have additional utility mounts there as well as on the bottom. So if you want to put a rack, you can easily do that. The bike is also compatible with 650B wheel sets. So you can actually swap it out from the included 700 by C. So very versatile. That means you can run different wheel sets very easily. There's also plenty of clearance for wider than tires than the 700 by 37. If we'd look down here at the Cassette, it's actually 11 by 34 Shimano cassette. Again, really nice. Everything is name brand. Even the chain is a KMC. You don't just get some off the shelf one. So really high quality components, smooth shifting, and you get those graining gears with the subcompact crank and then the 34 on the rear. In terms of the saddle, you get a WTB Silverado in that same blue color as the Diamondback, which is really cool and plenty of grip on here. You can see all the perforations and the little center relief channel. Here's the other side of the bike that you rarely see most of the photos on the drivetrain side. But you can see same tapered frame, the little kink near the rear, and then you can just see the disc brakes on both sides. Again, 160 millimeters for both. Now let's get the Hanjo 5 on the road. Really enjoyed riding this bike, especially on the hard pack coastal trail. So if you have fire roads or flatter roads, you can really gain a lot of speed with the Hanjo 5 and you have all the nice components to really make it supple. Even though it's not a carbon frame, there's a lot of absorbency with the carbon fork, the carbon seat post, and then the geometry itself. So it's nice and compliant. So you have a lot of confidence you can throw through the corners and the 700 by 37 WTB tires give you a lot of traction as well. So you can actually get out of the saddle and sprint without worrying about spinning out. On the flip side of that, you have the hydraulic disc brakes, which really have nice, soft, smooth modulation. It's the reason why everyone likes hydraulic brakes. They really feel a lot better than rim brakes and they're always smooth. So whether you're doing 40 miles an hour or five, they always feel the same and gives you a nice reliable modulation. You also have the flared handlebars, which is really great for faster speeds as you can get aero and then have more stability with that wider grip. Now the bike is also well geared for doing climbing. So you can see even if you go up steep roads, you have the traction and the gearing to really get up there. So you just throw in the granny gear and just spin it out. So a nice combination of confidence lets you explore even more difficult trails. Now, like us, if you make a wrong turn, end up on the wrong trail, you may have to walk the bike and being at only 23-ish pounds, it's something you can easily do until you get to a section where you're more comfortable. And again, with the hydraulic disc brakes, you don't have to fear coming back down these roads as you have the braking performance you need. Now, the Handrail 5 can be an N equals one. It can be that one bike that replaces them all. But with the... 700 by 37 tires on the road. They have a lot of drag, so they definitely slow you down. If you want to do longer rides, we highly recommend swapping the tires out or maybe running a second wheel set 
for road days and then swapping back to the included wheel set for the mountain biking or gravel trails. So it's definitely a balance there, but still fun to ride on the road, especially if you want that endurance geometry so it's very comfortable, you're not gonna have back pain. But it's less optimal, so if you wanna do sprinting or weekend club rides, you may wanna set the road bike or just set this up a little more aggressively with different wheel set. Now let's go over the scorecard for the Hanjo 5. We're gonna grade it on four different categories, design, components, handling, and value. For design, we give it an A. You have the nice all-road geometry with the tall head tube and more slack, seat post and headset. So that gives you a more comfortable position and you have a lot of nice features such as the aluminum frame. Components is also an A, you get a high quality kit. So a lot of name brand products here. You get the heat stem, seat post, wheel set, even an FSA headset. So really nice features here. Handling is also an A, it's smooth and supple, even though it's not a carbon fiber frame. Very comfortable to use on rough roads. And with the more endurance style geometry, you have a lot of confidence. Value, we'd also give it an A, it's very well equipped. It's, I think it's one of the best values in the Hanjo lineup. You get the name brand components and the high quality drivetrain without the higher price of the carbon Hanjo 6 or higher version. So a great balance between features and value. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.